So today we'll be discussing about uh, some instruments which are used for temperature measurement. So as uh, uh, this uh, temperature, this is nothing but tell us about the degree of hotness and coldness. And uh, basic working principle, because temperature is uh, uh, not a direct quantity because uh, temperature we need to represent on a linear scale. So it is, uh, uh, so to indicate it, uh, we have different ways, different physical characteristics we are using to uh, measure the uh, temperature. In that uh, first is change in dimension. Second is change in electrical resistance, thermoelectric effect, uh, EMF, change in intensity and color of radiation, fusion of material. So, so these are the different physical characteristics. Because of change in temperature, you may get change in dimension of uh, metal. You get uh, change in resistance of uh, uh, material. And because of change in temperature, you, you get uh, generation of EMF. Uh, because of change in temperature, you get variation or the change in the color of uh, metal and uh, because of uh, change in temperature and if you are close to melting temperature then you get fusion of material right so based on this physical quantity actually indirectly we are measuring the temperature so different instruments uh, they are having uh, their different principle their different physical characteristics so temperature scale as uh, generally we are using centigrade and Fahrenheit to uh, measure the temperature. So uh, generally again uh, this temperature is a relative quantity means we need to uh, define the datum with respect to which we are uh, measuring the temperature. So uh, for scaling purpose or for uh, uh, formulating the scale we are using two reference points freezing point and boiling point of water. So freezing point that is zero degree Celsius and hundred degree Celsius is the boiling uh, point. And uh, so zero to hundred, they are divided into hundred parts. Then each part that will give you one degree, right? Similarly, uh, we are using uh, water freezing point and boiling point as a reference in Fahrenheit. So 32 uh, Fahrenheit to 212 Fahrenheit, uh, we divide it into 180 parts. Then each part that will give us the one Fahrenheit, right? So this is how uh, we are getting uh, temperature scale. Uh, Kelvin and uh, Rankine, as you know, these are the absolute scale. So this first uh, centigrade and Fahrenheit, they are relative scale and this is the absolute scale. So vacuum uh, uh, temperature measurement that is, that is based on the Kelvin and Rankine. Now, uh, as we have uh, considered two reference points here, which are very popular, but uh, for other reference points, we go for different equilibrium phases between the uh, liquid and vapor of different materials. Like uh, 0 to 100 we got. Now next uh, reference point for uh, formulating the scale, temperature scale, that is uh, liquid sulfur. So uh, liquid sulfur uh, and its vapor uh, temperature that is uh, uh, triple 4.6 degrees Celsius, right? Similarly, silver, liquid silver is having uh, its, uh, 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 means from solid to liquid, when it fully convert, and the silver convert, then uh, its temperature is 960, right? Similarly, we use gold uh, temperature as a reference. So these are the other reference uh, points, which we are using for preparing the scale of instrument for the temperature measurement. Now, classification of temperature measuring instruments based on ASME. So, first is simple glass thermometer, which uh, is very popular and which we are using for human body temperature measurement. Uh, then, pressure gauge thermometers, uh, then differential expansion thermometers, uh, electrical resistance thermometers, thermocouple optical pyrometer, radiation pyrometer, fusion pyrometer, uh, calorimetric pyrometer, color temperature charts. So these are the different instruments 
which are used for temperature measurement. In our discussion, we'll be only discussing glass thermometer, differential expansion thermometer, which is also called as a bimetallic strip, and thermocouple. Because thermocouple is also a very popular instrument. Uh, if I briefly discuss principle of pyrometers, then pyrometers, uh, they are non-contact instruments. Because uh, when, when you heat any material, then their color changes. So optical pyrometer that is working based on the change in color with the temperature. And radiation pyrometer is every body that is uh, emits some radiation based on the temperature, based on the temperature of that body, right? So this radiation pyrometer, they are measuring temperature based on the radiation emitted out of a uh, hot body, right? So similarly, we have some other, but as uh, we'll be focusing only on Glass thermometers, differential expansion, and thermocouple. So, first of all, liquid in glass thermometer. So, if you look, this is the liquid in glass thermometer where this bulb portion that is the sensing point, uh, which is actually making contact with the hot medium, then stem that is the main body, then, uh, uh, then we have scale right then uh, this immersion line some uh, uh, means this immersion line is the uh, is the line up to which we need to dip the thermometer in the hot medium and uh, then we have a linear scale and at the end we have a expansion chamber so expansion chamber is generally used for safety purpose as it is discussed here it is filled with the nitrogen and carbon dioxide so uh, that will uh, that will raise the boiling temperature of mercury if mercury is filled in this uh, thermometer right so like uh, mercury we are also having some other uh, liquids which can be filled in thermometer and we can change the uh, temperature measuring range of thermometer by changing the uh, liquid uh, liquid which is filled in the thermometer right so uh, Generally, mercury use because of uh, these are the advantages of mercury. It is having broad temperature span from minus 35 degrees Celsius to uh, 510 degrees Celsius. Linear coefficient of thermal expansion over the entire uh, temperature range and non-wetting of glass. So, uh, these are the some of the advantages of uh, mercury. That's why mercury is more popular in liquid in glass thermometers. But as I told you, we have some other liquids also. So if you look the alcohol, then uh, it's, if you look the uh, negative temperature range, that is minus 80, which is more than mercury, right? Similarly, if you go to pentane, then uh, it can measure uh, negative temperature, uh, means temperature below zero degree Celsius, right? Compared to, uh, so, so if you look the temperature range, means if you are using pentane, as a, a liquid in thermometer, then your measuring range is minus 200 to 30 degrees Celsius, right? So based on the uh, application of uh, thermometer, you have to choose the liquid, uh, which uh, can be used as a, as a medium in the thermometer. Now, this is just giving you idea about calibration. So, if you look, uh, uh, we have ice bath in that we dip a uh, thermometer which is filled with the mercury. So there will be some expansion because uh, ice bath is at zero degree Celsius. So you will get some expansion in the mercury. Uh, so that you mark as a zero. Right. Now you shift this uh, uh, thermometer to the boiling water. Right. If you shift to the boiling water, then again that will expand and it will uh, uh, remain here. Steady state condition, right? So that we mark as a 100 degree uh, Celsius. And now we'll divide this 0 to 100 into equal 100 divisions. Then each division that will give us 1 degree. So this is how uh, we do calibration of uh, simple liquid filled thermometers. Now, uh, 
three different types of thermometers are there. So, a uh, first thermometer is total immersion thermometer. So, yes. You said that uh, uh, we first keep the thermometer in zero degree Celsius and then we mark that point and then we keep it in 100 degree Celsius and then we mark that point. Yes. So, but how do we know the temperature in the liquid is zero degree Celsius? In order to know that it is zero degree Celsius, we need some reference. And uh, as, so, as, uh, as we know, freezing of water occur at zero degree. Yes, right? sir. So that is defined as a zero. So that's why uh, when you are having uh, ice bath and in that if you are uh, uh, immersing this uh, thermometer, then temperature uh, must be zero degree. So with that reference, we are marking here zero. So but we can also have one, uh, I said one degree Celsius. So we don't know it is like if I, if I take ice from a freezer and I, I, then I will have I said 37 degrees Celsius. So, sir, it is possible that ice can be formed. At, so, sir, how do we know that the temperature in the bath is exactly zero degrees Celsius? It can be some other temperature. As as for calibration, uh, uh, for uh, uh, for preparing scale, we need to depend on any any uh, reference, right? So, uh, for calibration of uh, uh, means to to define zero degree, what option we have? Because zero degree Celsius is is the is the uh, freezing temperature of ice, right? So so then then you need to take care of that uh, uh, that time of calibration. Means uh, as you take your ice out of freezer, and then after just uh, dip uh, thermometer uh, uh, within that ice bath, so that you can ensure there is no uh, melting of ice, and that's why you are having. Zero degree Celsius temperature. Sir, so that that sir, care we need to take. Yes. Sir, sir, like mass, like we have standard mass at the French uh, that French laboratory. That there is a mass. Like we have a definition for time. We have a definition for length. Is there a de so temperature is also one of the fundamental quantities. So is there a definition for temperature based on like a fixed definition? Definition of temperature. So like we have for mass. Suppose I say one kilogram of mass. So then there is a specimen in the laboratory that of international laboratory of weights and measurements. So there is a specimen which defines one kilogram of mass. Similarly, so like when we talk of uh, length, so there is a particular definition for length that it is a distance traveled by light in one second or so one by three seven three nine seven to something velocity of that light. That is one distance traveled by the light. So we have a definition for one second. So is there a definition for temperature like one degree or one degree Kelvin has some definition. Those are temperature also one of the fundamental scale. Hmm. So, so, so that is what I am telling you. That that we define means zero degree is uh, is defined as a as a ice freezing temperature. So that that we are taking as a reference. That is uh, that is defined as a zero degree. So with reference to that, we are otherwise if you if you want absolute scale, then you go for Kelvin. Right? Then you go for Kelvin and Reckan, which you might have learned in your thermodynamics. To define uh, this Kelvin and Rankine scale, you go for uh, uh, that that backtracking, and uh, you 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 do find out that uh, uh, that intercept between the uh, 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 temperature and uh, uh, so so. Uh, I'm not able to uh, recapitulate all those fundamentals, but yes. Uh, Kelvin and Rankine is the is the absolute scale, which uh, based uh, reference to which we are defining temperature of other bodies, right? Like you might be knowing about that uh, critical uh, uh, points, uh, which is about the uh, or or uh, not critical point. It's a, it's a, like a triple point and all, right? So these are the uh, 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 this thing you might have learned. In thermodynamics. Okay, sir. Got it, sir. Yeah. And also, sir, while calibrating a thermometer, sir, this uh, all the manufacturing uh, manufacturers uh, take a note that uh, atmospheric pressure is one atm, uh, so that the definition can be maintained. Yeah. So, so that that care we need to take means uh, I have not covered that entire portion. 
I'm just giving you idea yeah. about how how uh, this uh, uh, this thermometers skills are prepared, right? Otherwise, we need to maintain them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so as we have uh, three different types, uh, where total immersion, partial immersion, and complete immersion. So uh, what? Total immersion type of thermometer means this is about the calibration, right? When when you are uh, uh, preparing this scale, as you can see, uh, we have prepared here scale uh, based on uh, the the different conditions, right? So here, based on the calibrating conditions, we are having three different types of uh, thermometers. One is uh, uh, the total immersion, partial immersion, and complete immersion. So what is total immersion? Uh, immerse to the top of mercury column. So if you if you look uh, the mercury column right now, uh, that is somewhere here. Then you you immerse uh, thermometer says that mer uh, that mercury column is within the uh, the medium whose temperature you want to measure, right? So that is uh, called as a, a total immersion. Partial immersion means there you have some reference line. While you are uh, you are calibrating uh, or you are preparing this type of scale, at that time you have uh, marked one reference line, and that reference uh, and up to that reference line, always thermometer kept uh, inserted within the your reference media, and then you got a calibration. So, what is partial immersion uh, uh, thermometer? Whenever you use now this thermometer, then you need to Deep thermometer up to that marking, that is called as a partial immersion, and the complete immersion means you need to completely with uh, means entire glass team up to the expansion chamber is to be uh, deep within the medium for the temperature measurement, right? So, so these are the three different uh, uh, types of uh, uh, thermometers uh, based on their calibration condition, right? Now, uh, to explain that, uh, as you can see here, this type of uh, indications are already available on thermometers. Like this is total immersion. So, if you look, uh, what is total immersion? You need to dip up to the mercury uh, uh, column, right? Then we have a partial immersion. So, you can see here this is a reference line. So, you need to dip thermometer up to this reference line, right? But sometimes, suppose uh, uh, if you look, uh, uh, you are not having uh, uh, that much of medium uh, for temperature measurement, and uh, if you are using uh, uh, this type of uh, complete immersion thermometer, this is complete uh, immersion thermometer, but uh, it is not completely deep within the media, right? It is uh, uh, deep up to this much of height. Right, so that will give you some wrong temperature because, uh, as per the uh, calibration process, uh, or when we have calibrated this thermometer, at that time we have dipped it uh, completely within the reference media. But right now, when you are doing measurement, uh, it is not possible to dip it completely, and that's why some graduation or some portion of thermometer that remain out of the media, and that will cause some variation in the temperature. Right, so that's why what is done here. Uh, we have used two thermometers. One is complete, and second is uh, partial. And uh, now we are we are uh, uh, taking temperature of both. So T1 is the temperature of complete immersion, and T2 is the temperature of uh, uh, total immersion, uh, which is having contact. Means this second uh, thermometer that is measuring temperature of first thermometer, glass team of first thermometer, right? And uh, this explanation is given for calibration. So here, if you see uh, this stem correction in degree is uh, this uh, constant into uh, N, where N stands for how many graduations of uh, primary thermometer they are out of the media, right? Then T1 and T2, that is temperature difference. Temperature of uh, primary thermometer and T2 is the temperature of secondary thermometer. And by solving this, we can get the correction, which is to be applied on the primary thermometer. Yes. Sir, I am not able to understand. 
So how long you are measuring the temperature? Uh, as uh, suppose this is the media which temperature we want to measure, right? And suppose we are using uh, this thermometer, complete immersion thermometer. But if you look uh, as per the condition of uh, use to this complete immersion thermometer, to completely deep it within the media, right? But suppose it is not possible here in this case. Some graduations they are outside, so there you have some ambient effect. And because of that, uh, this thermometer, this T1 temperature, which is indicated by primary thermometer, that is not the correct temperature of media, right? So I need to find out uh, how much correction we need to apply to get the correct temperature, right? So for that, we are using one additional thermometer, uh, which is actually measuring temperature of glass steam of primary thermometer. And this correction, equation is given which we can use to find out the correction right now is it clear yes yeah so so that's why this image uh, so if you look this this image is telling about the uh, calibration condition of this thermometer when we are preparing uh, temperature scale on this thermometer at that time we have completely dip it within the uh, reference media but here we are not getting uh, that sufficient amount of uh, uh, working fluid, uh, uh, sufficient amount of uh, fluid uh, uh, whose temperature we want to measure, right? So that's why we need to apply some correction to get the final temperature. So looking to same, one, one simple example is given here. A certain uh, mercury in glass thermometer is graduated for total yeah. immersion, yes. Sir, why correction was applied? I, I don't understand. Why correction? Why we have means correction? Why we have applied correction means? Yeah. For what reason? Because correction? because we have prepared temperature linear temperature scale on uh, primary thermometer for this condition. As per this condition, thermometer should be completely immersed within the media. Right now, what is happening in actual case? Complete immersion is not possible here. Some portion of thermometer that remained outside means that is having interaction with the atmosphere. So that's why the temperature which we get for this condition on primary thermometer, that is not the correct temperature of this medium. So that's why we need to apply correction to get the actual temperature of medium. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. okay? So, uh, looking to same when once, yes. Sir, outer part of uh, uh, this thermometer is insulating body. Now, how, how uh, we can measure temperature difference from another secondary thermometer? Outer part is not completely insulated. Means, uh, uh, otherwise, if, if, if that is insulated, then how can you measure temperature? Because uh, generally, heat transfer take place through glass steam. Sir, from sir, medium to the mercury yeah to measure a temperature we have uh, like uh, that last point no? silver silver color point here yeah. uh, in thermometer sir we we have uh, like silver silver color column in bottom sir yes Sir, so through that we are measuring temperature no? uh, of that fluid because outer cover is plastic or sorry glass so that is mm. insulated no? yeah insulated uh, see, if, see, that be, if that would be conducting so we 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 will felt hot uh, during measurement of that thermometer if we keep uh, hold it in our hand uh, see uh, uh, what is the condition here means how when when you are preparing this scale temperature scale then what was the condition of immersion that is important so uh, suppose if if you are calibrated or if you have prepared this scale for for only steam immersion only uh, the steam immersion and based on uh, means you have only immersed uh, that steam portion in the ice bath and then you have marked zero 
and then after you have prepared this scale and now if I use that thermometer for this type of case for complete immersion then definitely I will get uh, some some uh, variation in the reading. So, this is what giving you idea about the uh, the the calibration uh, condition and the actual use condition. Right? So, that is why we need to apply correction and that the, uh, uh, that expansion of mercury that take place by getting heat uh, from the media through that steam or that glass bulb portion at this location. So, this is making contact. Uh, so, this is deep inside uh, your uh, working fluid. So, first steam will take heat and it will pass further to the mercury. Fine. Sir, what is N over here? What is? N, N. Number of graduations, they are remain outside. And to okay. explain that okay. only we are discussing this example. This will make all this uh, calibration or this correction clear. So, if you look, uh, uh, this, uh, a certain mercury in glass thermometer is graduated for total immersion and used in a situation where it is immersed to the 100 degree mark on scale. Means we have dipped thermometer for 100 degree marking, right? Well, it was used for total immersion. Now, the thermometer indicates a temperature of 250 degree Celsius. Means it is immersed up to 100 100th graduation and now instrument is indicating 250 degree Celsius. So, how many graduations they are out? from fluid 250 minus 100 150 graduations right and the mean temperature of emergent column is estimated as 150 degree celsius so this is the t2 because it is about the uh, temperature of that column which is out of liquid right so, uh, we are using this equation now. So, first of all, uh, number of degrees exposed out of liquid that is uh, 100 minus uh, or 250 minus 100. So, 150 graduations, they are out of uh, 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 your liquid bath. Uh, T1 is the reading of primary thermometer. So, that is 250 degrees Celsius. T2 is a reading of secondary thermometer that is 150 degree Celsius, right? So, I got all three values to solve this correction, stem correction. So, if you uh, solve that, then you will get uh, 252.4. Sir, hello. Yes, yes. Sir, ye N hai wo jitta temperature dikha hai. mercury ka or Level of immersion ke beech mein number of divisions hai na? Haan. Ki total number of divisions hai. Matlab, emergence ke upar jitte bhi division hai, wo hai ki, uh, matlab, mercury column jaha tak hai, wahan tak ke. Haan, mercury column jaha tak expand hua hai, liquid hmm. ke upar, that is, Haan. that is your uh, number of uh, degrees exposed out of uh, bath. Okay, wo n, okay. Okay. Sir, yes. sir, I have to measure 250. Our thermometer is 100. Uh, no, 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 instrument is 250. We have to immerse 100 marks. We have to thermometer. But how do we लेकिन हमारे पास इतना मीडियम सफिशिएंट नहीं है तो हमने जब इसको डिप किया तो यहां पे जो लेवल है वो 100th ग्रेजुएशन तक का है उसके बाद ये मर्क्युरी एक्सपांड होके बाहर आया फ्लूइड के बाहर यहां पे तो वो 250 ग्रेजुएशन पे आके रुका ठीक है 
तो कितने ग्रेजुएशन उसने ट्रैवल किए अबो योर लिक्विड बाथ 150 सो दैट इज एन इट्स अ रेशन गॉट इट ठीक है सर ये फार्मूला डिराइव करो ना ये फार्मूला दिस इज कैलिब्रेटेड फार्मूला there is no derivation because uh, we have some constant here so this we have uh, uh, based on the exponents we have prepared this uh, uh, formula like that means there is no derivation of this equation correction is given in terms of number of graduations out of liquid and temperature difference okay sir so uh, these are the advantages of uh, this type of thermometer simplicity of use and relatively low cost easily portable easy for checking physical damage means it is about the thermometer itself its mechanism is such that you can easily identify if any damage is present no need of power source additional power source is not required Uh, no additional indicating instrument is required because on glass tube itself we are preparing this scale limitation as it is made up of glass so fragile construction uh, measuring range limited to 600 degrees celsius means if you want to measure temperature above this then uh, we need to go for some other temperature measurement instruments like thermocouples and all pyrometers and all uh, not convenient for remote reading remote reading in the sense if you are working in process industry uh, and uh, you want to uh, uh, observe uh, uh, temperature in the boiler temperature in the boiler right now uh, boiler is located somewhere else and your control room is located somewhere else and it the control room you want to see the uh, the uh, value of different uh, property like pressure temperature and all right so that is not possible because that observer has to go to a specific location of thermometer and then he need to uh, inspect that right so there is uh, there is some other arrangements like uh, liquid filled in thermometers uh, but as we are restricted up to mercury thermometers so that's why we are not discussing that otherwise uh, there we have some some mechanism by which uh, that is the extended version of this mercury thermometers right but uh, that we are not going to discuss as a part of this course uh, so next is about response time lag because of high heat capacity of bulb so this is about the uh, the the issue with the thickness of glass tin right because that will occupy some heat and then after uh, sensing of uh, or the expansion of mercury will start so there you have some response lag or some delay time right so this is about the advantages and limitations of uh, uh, this mercury filled thermometer now next is bi metallic thermometers so first of all basic principle is we have two different metal strips which are having different coefficient of thermal expansion so right now if you look uh, we have invar which is having a coefficient of thermal expansion this much and cobalt which is having a, a coefficient of thermal expansion higher than invar right so these two materials strips they are uh, 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 merged together and made as a common unit now what happen is uh, you can you can assume a cantilever arrangement and uh, this end is fixed right so if you expose a tip of uh, this combination to any hot media then because of temperature we get expansion of both the material but thermal expansion rate or coefficient of thermal expansion of both the materials that is different one is having higher and second is having lower right so because of that 
bending of this strip take place right so here uh, the the white color plate that is having a, a base coefficient of thermal expansion means it is made up of invar and this black color strip that is made up of cobalt right and now if you keep this end fixed and if you expose this free end to the temperature then then as this uh, low coefficient of thermal uh, thermal expansion plate is not allowing expansion of this uh, black strip so because of that bending take place downward right so now if you measure uh, the deflection of this free end to correlate this deflection with the temperature change in terms of calibration right then based on the deflection of this strip we can measure temperature yes yes nihar so why do we use two strips? So instead of just use one strip, and when we measure the length of the strip, and measure the measurement of the length of the strip, we know the alpha uh, equation. This is about the magnification. We are we are talking about the magnification. That's why. That's why we go for uh, two different strips of uh, uh, different thermal expansion, right? Because one is having very least thermal expansion, and second is having very large thermal expansion compared to the first. So this type of combination that will give us very large deflection at the end for the minor change in the temperature. So because of that, we are doing this arrangement. Okay. Yeah. So same is explained here in terms of analytic equations. So we are not going to derive this entire equation, but yes, uh, uh, when you are having some combination, of uh, two different materials with uh, different coefficient of thermal expansion and different uh, young modulus and uh, now if you expose it to some temperature uh, which is given here as a t uh, operating temperature then this bending take place and that bending or that radius uh, uh, due to bending that uh, radius of curvature of uh, this combination can be estimated by this equation right so this is based on the bending theory uh, temperature based bending theory so here uh, if you look in this equation we have t which is the total thickness where t1 and t2 so what uh, suffix 1 stands for suffix 1 is the low coefficient of thermal expansion material means this lower material right and uh, suffix 2 stands for material which is having higher thermal expansion coefficient of thermal expansion right so this t is total thickness m is a thickness ratio t1 to t2 n is young modulus ratio e1 to e2 this alpha is uh, uh, means if you look this alpha 1 and alpha 2 here then they are coefficient of thermal expansion of these two different materials t is the operating temperature and t zero is the initial bonding temperature when we have prepared this uh, uh, this bimetallic strip so this is why this is called a bimetallic strip now that is clear we are having two metals that's why it's a bimetallic strip right so based on the material property and temperature of the free end we can get the uh, radius of curvature now once you have radius of curvature then based on uh, that we can say angular displacement theta is equals to l by r right uh, l is the arc length and divide by r is the radius of curvature right and then y is the is the, uh, the this deflection because initially this uh, bimetallic strip was straight so this b is the uh, position of this free end without uh, or before exposing it to the temperature and this a is after deflection is this position this point is located as a a so uh, that's why this ob minus oa so ob minus oa that is the value y right so uh, this is the expression r1 minus cos theta for the uh, the deflection of this free end so this is how this uh, is calibrated this bimetallic strip is calibrated uh, in terms of reflection of free end with respect to temperature change 
and that's why generally because it it highly depends on the length if you if you consider more length of this biometallic strip then you can get more deflection right so that's why uh, length of this biometallic strip is uh, is considerable and uh, because of that to to accommodate it in uh, in a small space we are uh, uh, we are uh, configuring it in terms of helical biometallic strip right it is bended like this so what happen is this end is fixed and this free end of biometallic strip that is uh, uh, fixed with the spindle and at the end of spindle we have a pointer so this is uh, the front and this is the side view of uh, uh, this biometallic uh, thermometer so because when when you expose it to the temperature then uh, this this free end that will try to expand and uh, because of that uh, uh, this spindle that will rotate and rotation of spindle will be indicated by this pointer on the calibrated scale right so this is one configuration of bimetallic strip this is simple example uh, given for bimetallic strip uh, based on that uh, discussed equation a uh, bimetallic strip is constructed of uh, strips of nickel chromium and iron uh, nickel chromium iron alloy and in what this uh, so this is the alloy material and uh, it is uh, uh, fixed with the invar or bonded with the invar at 30 degrees celsius so your t0 is a 30 uh, the strip is 75 mm long small l is 75 and each material has a thickness of 1.25 so t1 and t2 value are given and uh, uh, material properties are given here uh, so you need to calculate radius of curvature produced when the uh, strip is subjected to a temperature of 250 degrees celsius so your t capital t is 250 in that equation now using this all property if you solve that equation uh, this r equation then you get r is equals to this much So I will require to remember uh, the equation. Uh, yes. So I will require to remember the equation of R. This is just for explaining you. You need not to remember. Sir. This is just to explain uh, about uh, uh, use of this bimetallic strip or the working principle behind this bimetallic.